Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will learn about Room Database. This is one of the most important topic in Android development. Also, as this is advanced series, so topics are kind of little tricky. But don't worry, I'll try my best to make it as simple as I can. So, as you already know, there are variety of ways to store data, right? Previously, we have used Firebase Real-Time Database, then SQLite Database, right? And now, Room Database. It's advanced, clean, and high efficient than other database. All right, let's understand Room Database. But before proceeding with that, first we need to do a little recap about SQLite Database because they are kind of related to each other. Hence, let's first understand SQLite Database. So this is all bookish definition, so better focus on what I am telling you, okay? Now see, as you already know, SQLite Database is a local storage present in your device that stores, retrieve, update, and delete the data with the help of queries, right? We have previously created a Notes app using SQLite Database with CRUD functionality. You can click on the i button to watch. But SQLite Database has some kind of drawbacks as well as a lot of boilerplate code. Hence, to overcome that issues, Room Library was introduced. Room Database is a library that provides an abstraction layer over SQLite Database. Now, what is abstraction layer? Basically, abstraction layer is a way of hiding the working detail of a subsystem. In our situation, subsystem is SQLite. In simple words, as I said, SQLite has a lot of boilerplate code, right? So, Room Database basically hides it and provides only the necessary code. We will see the differences in the next slide. But before that, let's understand more about Room Database. It's a clean and efficient way to store, retrieve, update, and delete the data. And it does not necessarily require queries to perform actions. Also, clean as in they are really structured, like MVVM. How MVVM separates model view and view model? Similarly, Room Database does the same by separating its component, which we will see in the upcoming slide. Also, it stores the data locally in the device itself. Got it? Then see, as I previously said, Room is an abstraction layer on the top of SQLite database, which basically handles the tasks that were performed by the SQLite open helper. And also, it brings a lot of customization that SQLite lack in itself. In simple words, you can say it's a better version of SQLite database. But what makes it better than SQLite? Let's see the differences. First, in SQLite, there is no compile time verification of SQL queries. But in Room, it validates each and every SQL query at the compile time. Second, as your schema changes, schema as in database structure, okay? So it says if your schema changes, then in SQL, we need to update it manually. While in Room, it automatically updates it. Then third, as I said previously, Room avoids boilerplate code by directly mapping the database object to Java object, while SQL uses a lot of boilerplate code to do the same thing. Fourth, as Room is a new and advanced library, hence it works with live data, MVVM, RxJava, and many more, while SQL does not. Next, remember in MVVM, this is view, this is view model, then below it, there is a repository, that consists of model, which is basically Room Database. This is where Room Database resides. Got it? In the end of this advanced series, I'll be creating a project using Room and MVVM, which will clear all your doubts. Okay? So stay tuned for that. And then next comes the important part that is basically three components of Room. First is Entity. Second is DAO, that is Database Access Object. Third is Database. These three components are responsible for making the application clean and structured. Each one of them is very important, so let's understand it one by one with the help of examples. Okay? First is Entity. An entity is a class that represents a database table, including its column data types and primary key. In simple words, there is an entity data class that will declare table name and all the columns present inside it. Let's see the sample code to understand it better. This is an entity data class named as user entity. Also, I thought of creating an entire room database project, but it's quite huge. Hence, I'll cover it in the end of the series. But for now, we have sample codes for each component. To implement room database, make sure to add room database dependency in the Gradle module. Now, let's have a look at entity data class. 
As I said, entity declares table name as well as column name, so this is how it looks. This at the rate entity is annotation. Each component has its own annotation, like entity has at the rate entity, DAO has at the rate DAO, and database has at the rate database. But what is annotation? Annotation is like a node that defines what actions are we supposed to perform. Like whenever we declare entity annotation, that means this is where we are supposed to declare table name and column. See, this is the list of all the annotation present in room database. You will find this on internet too. Now back to entity class. So our table name is users and this is not a normal class. It's a data class. Okay. Then inside it, we have three column name with their data type. First is ID whose data type is long and also it's a primary key. You know the concepts of primary key, right? Like if we associate primary key with a column, that means that column values will be unique. So here all the ID needs to be different from each other. Likewise, phone number and email column can also be a primary key, right? It is mandatory to declare one of the column value as primary key in room database, okay? Next, we have a column name as name, whose data type is string, and then email that is also a string. And that's it. See, it's so easy to write entity code, right? Now let's understand DAO, that is database access object. A DAO is an interface that provides abstract method to interact with database. Basically, it enables CRUD operation that needs to be performed on the entity. Sounds complicated. Let's crack it. First, let's understand what is an interface. So interface is a collection of constant and abstract methods. Now, what is abstract method? Abstract method usually don't have body. Like, there does not have any implementation details present in it. Let's have a look at sample code of DAO. This is an interface whose class name is user DAO. As I said, each component has its own annotation. So for DAO, it is at the rate DAO, which lets you create an interface with all the abstract methods present in it. Entity is a data class and DAO is an interface. Clear, right? Now let's have a look at all the abstract methods. As I said, abstract method means the method without a body. So as you can see, we have CRUD annotation with suspend keyword, but there is no body, right? But what is suspend keyword? Suspend keyword makes sure that whatever the function is, that needs to be performed in the background thread for asynchronous database access. Means that function can be paused or resumed without blocking the thread on which it's running. All this function needs to be performed on the user entity which we created before. That is nothing but the table and columns, right? See, don't focus on each and every line of code because it's just a sample code. Hence, I'm focusing only on the syntax code. See, as I previously said, you don't need to write queries. So see, we have insert annotation, then update annotation, and then delete annotation with their respective function. But Roam also provides us to write custom queries using query annotation. Like this query retrieves all the data from the user's table and this one retrieves only the ID from the user tables. Got it? So we have table in entity and instructions in DAO and now we need to connect both of them through database, right? Hence, let's understand the third component that is database. It is an abstract class that serves as a main access point to the SQLite database and also it connects user entity and user DAO. Let's have a look at sample code of database. This is an abstract class called as user database. Abstract class is different and abstract method is different, okay? So I already explained what is abstract method, basically method without body. An abstract class is similar like interface which contains mixed methods like methods with body as well as methods without body. Got it? Now here it has at the rate database annotation that declares user entity with its database version and then an abstract class named as app database that extends room database basically it serves as the main entry point for interacting with the database then inside it we have an abstract function that defines an abstract method that is user DAO with no body right this method is used to obtain an instance of the user DAO interface which provides method to interact with the database table associated with the user entity. 
then it defines a companion object and uses create database method to initialize the database see i'm not going to explain it in detail because it's just a simple code to give you an idea about database component right but we will understand it in detail while creating the project okay and that's it i know there was a lot of information to observe but each and every point is very important and also while learning room database we came across so many new concepts like interface abstract class abstract method sysmin keyword annotations right here it is a quick little summary for you pause the video and read it carefully if you want you can take a screenshot of it okay also for more updates you can follow us on instagram or join our telegram group link in the description box so yeah that is it for the video if you are new to this channel then please consider subscribing to my channel and i'll see you in the next video